Alright guys, what's going on? We are here, back for another video. Uh, I know it's not a prison series, which I think some of you guys are, are kind of keen for me to bring back. Um, I've been really, really trying to get that done, um, but as most of you guys know, my girlfriend's in hospital right now, been spending a lot of time there, literally get up, go to work at 6, drive to the hospital straight after work at 6 p.m., get home around 10, and get some stuff done uh, for my channel or talk to some friends. I've been trying to organize my server and um, yeah, and then that leaves me now. Quarter past 12, got to get up at six o'clock tomorrow morning, go to work again. So <laughs> a little bit hard, a little bit stressful, but I'm getting there. So it's all good. Um, but today I wanted to bring just a special kind of video. I know with my diving videos, I kind of just edit them up put a bit of music in there and let it play out and, and you guys watch it and enjoy it. But today I wanted to have a bit of a chat um, just about a few things about my diving uh, specifically because um, I do get a lot of questions about it. Um, you know, what kind of diving gear do you have? Where do you go diving? Um, when do you go diving? Um, is the water cold? You know, does your wetsuit help? How big are your fins? You know, what camera equipment do you use? Um, all that type of thing. Um, but the main question I get is, how do you stay underwater <laughs> without air tanks? Um, which which I, I kind of like. I, I like when people ask me that because it means, I don't know, it makes me feel cool. It makes me feel good that, you know, I'm underwater long enough um, that people go, hang on a second, this guy doesn't have air tanks on. What? And that makes me feel pretty cool. <laughs> um, but pretty much um, diving and, and, and being in the ocean kind of started from an early age for me. I grew up uh, in Port Macquarie on the east coast of Australia, um, coastal town. So I was always in the beach, always in the pool. Um, my pop taught me how to swim when I was like three or four, he basically just threw me in the pool and said, hey, make your way to the edge. Made my way to the edge and loves being in the pool ever since. Um, I did swim uh, professionally for, I swam for about eight to nine years and um, went to nationals, state titles. Um, yeah, top 10 at nationals in the whole of Australia. Um, third seconds at uh, uh, state level uh, schools and outside school as well. Uh, made it to nationals at school as well. So uh, I was a pretty good swimmer. Um, you guys may know of James Magnuson. He's uh, one of the best swimmers Australia's ever seen. He's pretty ridiculous. Um, one of my really good mates. I was playing with him for pretty much the whole time I was swimming. Um, so yeah, if you know him, then that's pretty cool because I know him personally. I was swimming with him for about eight years, every day, <laughs> for about five hours a day, two and, the, two and a half in the afternoon, two and a half in the morning. I was swimming uh, close to 20 kilometers a day. So about you know, eight to 10 in the morning, eight to 10 in the afternoon, give or take. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where my lung capacity kind of came from. Um, just swimming, holding my breath, uh, swimming so much. I was swimming, you know, in nearly 20 Ks uh, a day, uh, six days a week. Um, so then, you know, 120, 100, 120 Ks a week of swimming in the pool. Um, and I also um, was a lifesaver. So I had my bronze medallion and uh, I used to do uh, like surf life saving. Um, I used to row surf boats. So I was always in the water. I was at the beach. I surfed, I bodyboarded, I dive. Um, so yeah, basically I was always in the water um, when I wasn't at the skate park that is. But yeah, so that's kind of where my lung capacity comes from. And that's why I can stay in the water for a decent amount of time um, without needing oxygen just because I've got a, a pretty decent sized lung uh, capacity to be able to hold breath for, I don't know, underwater, maybe a minute, a minute and a half, um, which isn't really that long. Um, it's long for normal people, I suppose, um, that don't really swim or don't really go in the water much. I think that was a long time, but um, outside of water, if I'm relaxed and I'm just sitting there, I can hold a breath for about three minutes, three and a half minutes. Um, but swimming around, moving, um, you know, trying to fight the currents and everything like that, it's, uh, it's you can't hold your breath for as long. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been back in the pool. I uh, haven't been in the pool for maybe two years and I started back in the pool this year. I um, really want to try and get my lung capacity back up. Um, um, I really want to start yoga and stuff like that because it is really good for your lung capacity. Uh, it's good for your brain. So you can try and slow down your heart, slow down all of your, you know, all of your, your stress lose all your stress so then you can uh, you know focus on holding your breath longer um there's a guy i'll put links in the description to uh to this guy's uh if he has twitter or whatever but maybe his website and he's also got a book called breathology his name's stig um he is the world record holder for breath holding he can hold his breath for 22 minutes and 18 seconds um, i'll also put that link in the description as well 
pardon me, the uh, YouTube video for that. You can see that holds his breath for 22 minutes, which is uh, absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I've, I've been really wanted to buy this book and I've been trying to find out where to get it within Australia or I'll probably just have to buy it online and wait for it to come. Um, but yeah, it's called Breatheology. It's kind of all about him. Um, haven't really looked at it much, but it's all about him and uh, how, you know, maybe some stuff about breathing techniques and things like that, which is great because that's really what I want to learn. I really want to be able to hold my breath for a really... By June this year, I want to be able to hold my breath for five minutes and by the end of the year, I want to be able to hold it for nearly or at least 10 minutes. Um, so big, big commitment there. And I uh, really need to start doing some more exercise, but you know, with work um, and YouTube, it's it's hard to do anything else, but go to work, come home, do YouTube, get up, go to work, come home, do YouTube. Then on the weekend, I'm usually out doing stuff. So um, it is kind of hard to put the time in, but I think I'm gonna have to uh, start doing that sooner if I wanna kind of chase that dream of being able to hold breath for 10 minutes. So I'll see what happens, but um, yeah, equipment I use, um, I don't really know the brands, but I've got my camo wetty, I've got a hood, um, I've got some gloves and some boots. I might do a separate video on this maybe on the weekend and actually show you close up of all the stuff that I've got. Um, I've got some Cressy fins, Cressy professionals, um, they're professional uh, freediving fins. Um, that's pretty much it. I just got gloves and like a mask and stuff like that. They're kind of just all really random bits all over the place that I seen when I was at the dive store and thought it looked cool and I thought I'd buy it. Um, got it for a pretty good deal, which was great at uh, Wilderness uh, Dive uh, and Ski at um, uh, Liverpool in Sydney. Um, camera I use is a GoPro uh, Hero 3 Black Edition. Uh, I've only got one at the moment. I'm going to buy a few more in the future as well. Maybe, maybe, maybe end up having two or three, so I can have one on my helmet. Oh, sorry, one on my mask, one on my head, or one in my hands and one on my wrist or whatever. So I have a few um, different angles and things like that, and it'll be better for videos in the future anyway. So it'll be pretty cool. Um, the equipment that I use is I usually just take one uh, pole. I take my uh, Go Pole uh, telescopic. Uh, extension pole down with me because it's it's cool it's not very big it's it goes 17 inches to 44 inches so you can have it extended right out and get those cool angles uh, as you're diving down or coming up or you can also have it really really closed in and it's uh, you're pretty easy to move around uh, and it gives you kind of a bit more when when the waves aren't big like it was on this day uh, as you can see the waves there they're a little bit big um, and, and the current was pushing us around but usually uh, it's pretty steady uh, which is cool um, I also, the other day, I bought a uh, GoPole uh, grenade grip, so when I go in the ocean, I can uh, use that as well. And I also bought the floaty grip as well, uh, which is pretty cool, just for different types of things. So I probably use a grenade grip on land if I go to flip out and stuff like that. Um, and then the floater grip for when I'm in the ocean, uh, trying to film some waves and stuff like that. So either way, they're both pretty cool. Uh, and in this video, the main thing you'll notice from other videos is that the colors are a lot better. I've uh, actually bought and uh, put on my GoPole Pro um, a red filter which brings out the colors at uh, deeper depths um, so that's why you'll probably notice that a lot of the footage at the top of the water is really really red um, because it does have that red filter on it and it's reflecting off the sun but down underwater deep uh, the colors are a lot better which is awesome um, but yeah right here you can see we're, fe we're actually feeding a, uh, a blue groper um, this place we're, we're uh, diving out is called Gordon's Bay. Uh, it's near Coogee, uh right next to Clavelli, which is uh, in Sydney. I'll also put a Google Map drop point to that as well. So if you are in Sydney, um, yeah, let me know, and maybe we can we can meet up and go for a dive on the weekend or something like that. Definitely drop a comment if you are from Sydney and you have some dive gear, because um, it's just me and my mate that go. Otherwise, we'll give people to come. So you know, if you're uh, you know old enough that your parents would allow you to come for a dive, um, then for sure come down and we'll uh, have a bit of dive muck around. Uh, but yeah, we're feeding this blue groper here with this uh, with this bottom of this sea urchin. A little bit, a little bit mean to the sea urchin, but you know, it's what happens. It's food chain, I suppose. Um, but yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave me some feedback, what you thought. I'm going to do some more of these in the future. And yeah, hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye.